Well, good morning, Christ community. Welcome, everyone. We are here to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, for he's the great I am. Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers out there. So we come to rejoice, for he is our everlasting God. He is our everlasting King, and we come to worship and celebrate his name. Hallelujah. So come on and worship with us. Come on and celebrate with us as we give God glory and praise. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust. Say one more time, the Lord is my light, the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Say in harmony, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be I afraid? Wait. I will wait on you. God, we will wait in your presence. I will wait. I will wait on you. And we put our trust and hope in you, God. I will trust in you. We will trust in your name. I will trust in you. Now we cry to the Father, I will remain. I will, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. And you listen again, I will remain. I will remain. The goodness of the Lord. I will say that through my harmony. I will remain. I will remain confident in its. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain confident in its. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. Our trust in you, oh God. We put our hope in you, Father, as we love you, oh God, for you are the greatest king of all time, and we worship you. And we cry, and we said, oh. We said, I hope on you. We said, I hope on your love. We said, I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. God, you 
We cast our cares upon you. Say it again. I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. We cry. I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. And we set our hope on you, Jesus. We put our trust in you, God, as we worship you. For you said in your word, if I, if I be lifted up, you shall draw all men unto us, O God. And we thank you that you are a way maker and a miracle worker. Light in the darkness, O God, that is who you are. And we worship your name, Jesus. And we give you glory, God. We thank you for your holy presence that is in this place. And we give our lives and our worship back to you as we surrender all to your name, Father. As we worship you, Jesus. Come on, let's say it together. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. We cry, you are here. Working in this place. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, Father. I worship you. Can we say that again? You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. You. We cry, you are here. You are here. Working in this place. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Now we make this declaration to the Father and we cry, way make a say, way make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. As we lift our hands as a token of surrender, we cry, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We cry, you are here. You are here. Touching every heart in unison. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We cry, I worship you. I worship you. We cry, you are here. You are here. Healing every heart. Healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Turning lives around, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. We cry, I worship you, I worship you. And we love to magnify your name. Bending every heart, bending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. I worship you. Now we cry in harmony, we cry, way make us say, way make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We love to cry and proclaim your great name, you are a way maker, way maker. Let's say that again. We cry. Way maker, say way maker. Way maker, miracle worker. Miracle worker. Promise keep light. light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, we can.
cast our cares upon the Father as we worship Him. We cry, we make a miracle work. Jesus, oh God. For those that are brokenhearted, oh God, heal them, oh God, touch them, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for your presence that is in this place, oh God. We thank you, God, that your ministering angels shall minister to your people, oh God, as we worship you. We thank you for this awesome day that you have made, oh God, for we made it to see another day. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, Jesus, that you shall minister to your people on this awesome morning. We thank you, oh God, that your people ready to receive your word, oh God, that their hearts are broken, ready to receive your word. And we declare your glory in this atmosphere, oh God, for we lift up our hands, oh God, for wherever we are, oh God, we worship you, oh God, for you are the most high God, you are the greatest king, and we love you, and we pull on your anointing, oh God, for you said in your word, oh God, that if I, if I be lifted up, you shall draw all men unto us, oh God, and we seek your face, oh God, and we love your name, oh God, for you are great Jehovah, you are the great I am. You are the Prince of Peace, and you are the Everlasting Father. And we give your name praise and honor and glory and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again. I just want to um, say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We appreciate you here at Christ Community Church. We hope that you have a lovely day. We know that um, we're quarantined and we can't do the things we normally do for our mothers, but we certainly appreciate you. So thank you so much for all that you do. We love you mothers. Uh, all mothers, for sure we love, but we certainly love the mothers that's a part of Christ Community Church. Um, got a special treat for us today. Uh, I've asked my lovely wife to join me uh, to be a part of a discussion. 
um, talking about motherhood and what it means to be a godly mother and just being a godly person in general. And so as, I, as I've been contemplating and thinking about, you know, what to present to the church, um, it, it, it just occurred to me that um, if, if we're going to talk about being a godly mother, I should probably get a godly mother up here. And so when I think about a mother that's committed to the Lord, that's committed to um, teaching Christian values and teaching uh, values of faith, uh, my wife comes to mind because she's just so committed to the Lord. She's so committed to making sure that, uh, that there's a transfer of godly principles and precepts um, to, the, to, to our children. And so I thought that she'd be a great person to kind of have this conversation with. So, uh, Bay, how you doing? I'm fine. How yeah. are you? I, I am doing well. You look lovely as you usual. You looking well. Do I? Yeah. Well, you guys need to know that when I married her, I definitely married up. Even though she's shorter to me, shorter than me, I married up because she's just like the bomb. And so she has <laughs> just so many good qualities. And so I was so glad. Uh, I don't know if I shared this with you or not, but the day that I proposed to you, I was so happy. Like, I didn't know what you would say. Like, I had an idea that you might say yes, but I wasn't, cert I wasn't confident that you would say yes. And so um, I was kind of nervous. Like, I don't know if she's going to say yes or she might say maybe. She might say, hold up, this is too much. But you said yes. And so I was happy. And you know I remember that date, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. You remember. Yeah, 10-2. Yeah, 10-2. Yeah, 10-2. Yeah. 10, two. 10, two. 10, two, oh, four. 10 two. So um, at any rate, we want to have a conversation about, um, you know, what it means to be a godly mother. Um, and I think, and I mean, that's specifically, but I think the broader conversation is really what it means to be a godly person, in particular being a godly woman. Uh, we know that uh, we live in a day where, um, unfortunately, um, there's images about what it means to be a woman and, um, you know, there's certain uh, philosophies and ideas out there about what it means to be a woman of influence. And I think it's important for us to have a conversation about what it means from a biblical perspective um, to be a woman in general, but specifically to be a mother. And I know that one of the things that we've been doing in our house is uh, we've been studying the Bible together uh, with our kids. And uh, we've been studying the book of uh, 1 Samuel. We're actually in 2 Samuel right now. Um, and I remember when we started 1 Samuel, I remember reading um, a woman that I've always been encouraged by in the scripture, uh, reading about Hannah. And so I uh, just wanted to see if you had any thoughts to kind of get us going about uh, what it means to be a godly mother or a godly woman or any thoughts about Hannah, anything that you would like to share? Hmm. Well, I think that like the idea of being a godly anything, it feels like this big um, pie in the sky thing mm -hmm. that we're all aspiring to or whatnot. But I think that it's just found in the, the day to day grind and it might not feel like you're accomplishing this big task it just feels like the everyday it might feel boring it, it might feel like you're not covering any ground or nothing really spectacular is happening but I think it's within those moments that God is really working um at I guess it was last year October last October we had a, a women's event and I was um I, I had invited my grandmother up um on stage with me and I was just telling her how her impact has really impacted me in, in my life and when I was a kid she had bought me this children's bible and when I came over she would read me the bible and I actually had brought the bible that I had when I was a kid and I showed it to her and I was like do you remember this and she was like no <laughs> and I was like what you know like that that was so integral in my life but mm -hmm. what it showed me was she was just doing the day to day she was just mm -hmm. doing what she knew to do mm -hmm. you know um she didn't think much about it in the moment it was just like what she knew to do just passing along what she what she had that she could give um and it didn't feel spectacular in the moment you know it's like planting a seed and you might not necessarily see the fruit of it for many many years it might feel like nothing it might feel like you're putting in all this work and you're getting nowhere um until much later and so i think sometimes we don't fully see all of the things that the lord is is doing in us a lot of times when it comes to our own self we see the negative or we mm -hmm. see the things mm -hmm. that maybe we don't do because i don't necessarily feel like a godly mother or mm -hmm. the, the whatever, you know, I just think day to day, we're all just trusting the Lord to do what he's called us to do. And nobody's doing it perfectly, but I think it's that consistency over time, um, you know, being committed to do the best that you can. Yeah, no, that's really good. And, you know, it's interesting because I remember when we got married, 
um, a good friend of ours, he uh, recorded our, our wedding you know, ceremony and he recorded the reception and he had people give comments. And I remember the comments your grandmother gave. Uh, uh -huh. It was like, she gave like this little, like, I, I want to say she gave like a little mini sermon, a little uh -huh. sermonette. Uh, but the kind of the content of her message was that keep God first. You know, that was the one thing that she kept emphasizing. And yeah. so, you know, I appreciate that within your family, there's this legacy of godliness, beginning with your grandmother, right? And then mm -hmm. transferring to her kids and then transferring over to you. And it's the same type of um, legacy that we're trying to establish with our kids mm -hmm. um, and, and in future generations. But I like the fact that you brought up that, um, you know, sometimes we romanticize, um, you know, what it means to be a godly person, you know, a godly person in general, but specifically a godly woman. And sometimes we forget that there are struggles, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's, um, conflict, there's uh, failures, there's um, strife, all of that's just part of the process. Uh, would you mind speaking to some of that and, and um, you know, like what is it that you do to help you uh, push through some of the struggles that you may encounter, especially being married to me? Okay, so let me, let me make sure I understand the question. Uh -huh. So struggling in terms of motherhood? In general, just being um, a godly sister out here in these streets. Okay, <laughs> I think that having other people that you can bounce ideas off of, that you can um, vent to, mm. um, and just have that space is really helpful. And people that you know that you have that space to do that with, but they'll also end up pointing you back to the Lord or pointing you back to, um, you know, that frame of mind that you want to have. And I think that the, the other part, honestly, I think is sometimes we just need a break. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you just need a nap mm -hmm. or sometimes you just need a couple hours, you know. And so giving yourself that margin in your life to take time for yourself mm -hmm. so that you can have something to give to somebody else, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so and then I think for me to just just what you just said, just knowing that it's OK to struggle. It's OK mm -hmm. to not feel like you got it all together. I think that's a. Um, it's a lie that anybody has it all together. So sometimes when we have our one little spot that we feel like we're not doing that well in, we feel like, oh, I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. But everybody has something, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so just knowing it's okay. Like, mm -hmm. I think we hype up perfectionism mm -hmm. and make that like the goal or whatnot. But sometimes it's just those little moments that really, really have an effect. It's not the overall being perfect it might I'll give you another example so going back to my grandmother I remember really clear when I left for college she came over to see me and she said take the name of the Lord with you <laughs> right and honestly it's like I knew what she meant but then again I'm like okay whatever that means right and I remember bringing it up to her a couple of years ago and once again she didn't she didn't really remember mm -hmm. Um, but she was just, she said the same thing. That sounds like something I would say. Mm -hmm. Like it was that moment that she didn't even remember, but it was really impactful for me, mm -hmm. you know? And so just knowing, just think about your body of work instead mm -hmm. of every moment being perfect. Just think about, you know what? I'm consistently showing up in whatever area and just, you know. Yeah. And then I would say the other thing too is to, going back to what I was saying about making sure that your cup has something in it to give, you know? And so, we need some sort of time in the word of God mm -hmm. so that we can have something, mm -hmm. you know, we need to have some sort of structure so our mind can be together, you know, even before the day starts, you know, so you can already be in that right frame of mind to kind of help you along the way. No, that's really good, really good um, advice and really good perspectives. As you were sharing, I um, had a couple of thoughts that kind of came to my mind. Uh, one is sometimes I think we don't value the, the Sabbath principle that God has established in scripture, you know, the need for us to rest, you know, and, um, you know, I was talking to your father actually about this uh, yesterday, and we were talking about how it's so important that we take time to recuperate, you know, take time to regroup and get ourselves together so that we could be the best version of ourselves. So I thought that was really good. Um, and I also thought it was good, just a reminder that, listen, it's okay um, to realize that we're not perfect. Right. I mean, that's part of the reason why we need Jesus. Uh, sometimes we try to operate like we got this, like we're super Christians. And the reality is uh, we all need grace, you know, mm -hmm. and we all need to drink from the cup of grace regularly. Uh, I want to go back to, to this conversation about Hannah, though, uh, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm really uh, uh, impressed by Hannah. I can't wait to meet Hannah. 
Um, but, um, you know, one of the things that I appreciate about Hannah, and um, you see this when you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, if, if you're looking for a context of a, a verse in the Bible or a passage in the Bible to kind of reference our conversation, you go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, but one of the things that I appreciate about her is I appreciate the fact that she was persistent um, in the midst of adversity. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with the story, um, Hannah uh, was married to a man, but she couldn't have kids. And, um, and um, during this time, unfortunately, he had another, another woman. Uh, he had another wife. Mm -hmm. And um, his other wife was able to produce children, but she wasn't. Uh, but she persists. She persists in prayer. And one of the things that I um, appreciate about her is that she persists even when she was misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And so there was a time when um, she was praying and they would go to the temple. Uh, they would go to Shiloh where the, the, um, the, the temple was in. And um, she was praying in the temple and Eli, who was the priest, he saw her um, in the temple and she was moving her lips, but no, there weren't any words coming out. And the Bible says she was praying in her heart. Mm -hmm. And so he misunderstood her. He, was, he thought that she was drunk up in the temple. And so it's like somebody coming to church drunk. And so he got on her a little bit. And she was saying, like, no, I'm, I'm praying to the Lord. I'm praying that God will provide me a seed. And, um, and so that just really blessed me. Uh, just, just from the standpoint that sometimes when you got to do stuff for the Lord, it gets, you get misunderstood. You know, it gets mm -hmm. really, um, you know, it sometimes it can get really ugly in terms of how people perceive you. And so I just want you to, if you wouldn't mind, just, think, just speak to or encourage uh, women that maybe feel misunderstood in their motherhood, uh, maybe feel misunderstood as they're, you know, raising kids is a messy process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have, you don't always know what the right things to do is. Um, but could you just encourage women or just speak to that, just that messiness and, and trying to steer your kids in the right direction? Yeah, it's interesting. I, as you were talking, I was thinking about just the idea of what she was doing. Like she was praying, like her heart was so heavy. Um, and she chose to turn that into prayer. And sometimes we take our heavy heart and we turn it into you know, I'm just about to skate for the rest of the day on social media, or I'm just going to check out, or I'm just going to, you know, you fill in the blank. But I think, you know, as we're navigating motherhood and as things sometimes get difficult, I think Hannah sets a really good example to take all of that and cast it upon the Lord, you know, and as we encounter different things and as we, you know, trying to figure things out and we don't really know all the time what to do, I think that that's really the key. And then I think I love, so this is First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 18. And um, Hannah says, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times I just pray that for myself. I pray that for other people. You know, Lord, help me that once I'm done crying my heart out to you, that my face is no longer downcast mm. because I'm leaving it with you and I'm trusting that you're going to move on my behalf. And so I think that we can, no matter what we go through, we can begin to see those situations as God is inviting us mm. to himself so that we can know him in a, in a deeper and more real way. I think that um, Hannah had the type of relationship with God that she did in part because of these difficulties, you know, in part because of some of the things that she had to deal with that caused her to have to step up to the plate mm -hmm. and go deeper with God. Mm -hmm. And so we always have that, that thought, like as we go through life, are we going to accept that invitation that God is calling us to go deeper mm -hmm. or not, you know? And, um, you know, like I was telling you, I definitely don't feel like anybody's expert on motherhood or any other things. But I know that, you know, day by day as we walk with the Lord, that he empowers us, you know, and he gives us strength. And sometimes that comes through people. It comes through, you know, the body of Christ. We're like his hands and his feet, you know. And so sometimes we have to activate that mm -hmm. by finding safe people to share what's really going on with us. Yeah. Because sometimes people don't know unless you tell them, like, hey, I'm having this issue, or I'm trying to figure out this, or I don't know what's going on over there. Um, sometimes when we open ourselves up that way, we're pleasantly surprised because then they, it's like God is using them to minister to us, you know, and to, to help us or maybe to give us a word of wisdom or whatnot. So 
I think it's just really important to stay close to the Lord and stay close to other people that can do two things, allow you to be you, meaning sometimes as a confidant or as a friend, you don't always have to rush in with the scripture. I'm not saying you're not going to give the scripture, but sometimes we just need to give people a little bit of room to feel their feelings, to be a person, to have a bad day, and know that it's okay. And once we've had that, then we know, okay, we, we're sitting here, but we're not going to camp here. Now let's, let's get our mind back together or let's remind ourselves of what's true. You know, and so I think as, as women that we should seek to be that for other people and seek to be around people like that, you know. Um, That's really good. Are you married? I am. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Your, your husband's a very blessed man. Uh, but, you know, that's a really good point because um, it's interesting because as Hannah was really struggling through this, uh, she found the confidant in her husband, right? And her husband really did love her, and mm -hmm. he really wanted to be an encouragement to her. But I thought you brought up a good point that we need that, those confidants, right? But at the same time, we also need to go to the Lord mm -hmm. because as much as he tried to encourage her, right. uh, she had to bring those things to God. Mm -hmm. And I think it was beautiful that you brought out that at, after she wrestled through these things with the Lord, she walked away feeling relieved. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes when we go through adversity and we go through trials, like you were saying, we go to other outlets to kind mm -hmm. of process that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the Lord invites us to come to him. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting because during our devotion time, uh, one of the mothers in our ministry brought up that um, Jesus invites us to, you know, those that are heavy laden and that feel burdens to bring them to him. And um, it's something that's very relieving when we can bring mm -hmm. all of our mess and our struggles and all the things that we go through to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we do that, God does give us peace. He gives us comfort. He helps us process that. Um, another thing that I appreciate about um, Hannah and I think this is really synonymous with being a mother, is um, I appreciate her willingness to sacrifice. Um, and I, when I think about motherhood, I think about um, individuals, people that just sacrifice. Like I know, for example, with my mother, uh, my mom sacrificed a lot for us. And I didn't really appreciate it as a kid, but I certainly appreciate it now. Um, I remember, you know, times when, you know, I mean, my mom had four boys and, um, and, you know, we would kind of be rough in the house, right? And you still think I'm kind of rough. I still can, can uh, slam things a little bit too hard. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, growing up in the house with a whole bunch of boys and, you know, we, we would dog out shoes. I mean, we would run through shoes because mm -hmm. we're constantly running. And before you know, we got holes in our shoes. And I remember my mom, you know, really sacrificed to make sure that we had shoes. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. Uh, but as I think about Hannah, I think about her sacrifice. So it's interesting that she wrestles with the Lord to get a son. And finally, she gets a son. And, um, and she offers her son up mm -hmm. in service to the Lord. It's a very interesting story. I encourage you guys to read 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, but she gets this, this son that she cried for, and she offered it up to the Lord, offered him up to the Lord. And the, the son served Eli in the, in the temple. Um, and, um, and so I just think that... You know, I, I want to encourage the ladies to know that your sacrifice is not unseen, um, that God sees your sacrifice, and it's honorable to the Lord. And, um, and when you sacrifice for the Lord, God blesses that. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, because of Hannah's sacrifice of, of Samuel um, to, to, to do work in the temple, God blessed her uh, with more kids. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so in chapter 2 of 1 Samuel, you read this beautiful song that Hannah wrote, um, just glorifying and celebrating the Lord. And at the end of that, you see that because of her sacrifice and her willingness to commit her ways to the Lord and to commit her life to the Lord, God blessed her uh, mm -hmm. with more children. And so I just think that's just a beautiful um, example of God honoring our sacrifices. Mm. Um, so another thing, go ahead, you want to say something? I do, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. Well, go ahead, because I got some other someone to say. Okay, too. well, two things. So when we're talking about, you know, having access to this peace of God, I thought about, um, Philippians chapter 4 and how it talks about if we would, you know, mm -hmm. bring our concerns to the Lord that he would um, give us a peace that just goes beyond understanding. Mm. And just as women, as mothers, as human beings know that we have access to peace mm -hmm. regardless of what we go through, mm. but we have to access it. Mm. Like it's just not going to come and bust in your house, Man. that we have to be like Hannah and we have to go to the Lord and mm. we have to pour out our hearts to him. Mm. Um, 
And that's the blessing that we get in return is this peace of God, not the peace of this world. Like the world can't offer you peace. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants peace of mind. You know, everybody mm -hmm. wants to kind of escape the mayhem of their mind. And mm -hmm. only God can give us that, mm -hmm. you know. And so Hannah is a really good picture of that. Um, the other thing I thought about was I think as women, you know, some of us have biological children and some of us don't, but we are nurturers. We, um, we know how to take a little bit of something and make it a whole lot of something. Like there are certain characteristics that we have as females that even if you're not a biological mother, I just want us all as, as women to know that Mother's Day is for all of us because we are nurturers. We come from nurturers, you know what I mean? Um, and so it's a day for all of us to celebrate, I think, how God has made us and wired us and how we have mothered lots of people, whether or not they came from our bodies or not, you know what I mean? Um, so I just had that thought as well. You know, that's a really good point um, to, to remind um, the ladies, you know, that this day is really for all women. Uh, because there's an element in which, like you said, it's embedded in the DNA, the way that God has wired women to be nurturers. And, um, and I think about growing up that there were certainly women that were very instrumental in my life that weren't necessarily my biological mom, although she was very instrumental, uh, but there were other nurturers that really helped me out along the way as well. So that's a great reminder. You know, the other thing that I, I wanted to talk about a little bit from this, this account um, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, it's just a reminder and, 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 and the reality of the fact that uh, we, we serve a living God who hears us. Um, I think sometimes as we process our pain and process our struggle, sometimes it can feel like um, God doesn't hear us. Sometimes it can feel like, you know, our prayers are stopping at the ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think um, Hannah's story is a reminder to us that uh, persevere because God does hear. And I think that element is brought out in the story through um, Hannah naming her son Samuel. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you got to know a little bit about the Hebrew to really appreciate that. You know I like Hebrew, so uh, give me my chance to kind of be a little nerdy here. All right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Me, I hope, help me not go too far, though, okay? Um, but uh, we all, I mean, many people have heard of the Hebrew Shema, right? Uh, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, right? Um, but that, that word Shema, um, it means to hear, right? So in the, in the Hebrew, it's actually, uh, you know, Shema Yisrael, right? Hero Israel. Um, and then El, the word El means God, like El Shaddai, you know, uh, means God. And so Samuel in the Hebrew is the combination of the word for Shema, the word Shema, which is to hear, and the word El, which is God. So his name indicates that God hears. His name in, mm -hmm. his, in and of itself is a reminder to Hannah that God hears. And the Bible records that um, every year Hannah will go to the temple and go visit her son. And the Bible says she would bring a little robe. I envision her bringing a little bitty robe, you know, with Samuel on it. <laughs> <laughs> little Oscar Mayer type thing, you know. And uh, she would bring it up to... Um, to Samuel every mm -hmm. year, you know, to give to him. But I would just, I just envision her every time she called his name, mm -hmm. being reminded of the fact that God hears. Samuel, that God is the God who hears. And so I just want to offer that to, to, to really anyone, not just ladies, but anyone, but particularly women, that as you're processing the pain and the struggles that, you know, you're going through, just remember that we serve a God that hears us. You know, that he's El Roy, that he's the guy who sees us, and that he's the guy who, mm -hmm. who hears us as we go through our, go through our struggles. So uh, anything else you want to say? I really, this is fun. We should do this more often. I really enjoy, um, you know, doing these type of interviews and, and these dialogues with you. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Uh, any, any final things? Anything you want to say about me? You know, you can let people know, you know, that I'm a cool guy, I'm a good husband, or, you know, I'm a good cooker. You can say something okay. uh, favorable towards me uh, on camera. You're a cool guy. Okay, there you go. Um, good husband. You're a good husband. And a good cook. And, um, <laughs> and a good cook. You're a good cook. Okay, all right. And <laughs> if you can let the world know that actually on the low, I can really sing. And you cannot <laughs> have ever not oh, been man. able to sing. Yeah, but I, yeah. Well, I mean, my mom didn't call me Levert for no reason. 
All right. What? Oh, help. Help us, Lord. <laughs> I make good jokes. Well, I really appreciate you. What I thought you said I could have some oh, final words. Oh, I'm sorry. Words. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because you got some final words. Well, I guess I shouldn't have Do you want me to, up so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I, you're not. You know, I gotta, I gotta well, let me say a few words. good things about you real No, you quick. don't have to do that. You sure? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it anyway, but go ahead. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think just to kind of wrap up our discussion, I think that if I think about things that I've been thinking that I haven't said, I think that we should all remember that, you know, God thinks that we are the right mother for our children. And we have to believe that. And so each and every one of us we bring a unique blend of strengths to the table that God thinks are ideal for whatever our child is. And so I know for me, I feel like there's a lot of things I see other people doing really well or really naturally as it relates to their kids. I'm like, Dad, I don't do that. Or I don't like, I don't even want to do that. Or whatever, you know, feeling like oh, I don't really measure up. But I have to keep reminding myself, well, that's not what God thinks. Like, let me try to fix my mind so that it aligns with what God thinks about it. And so, you know, that's kind of my perspective on motherhood and really on life, trying to take every category and line up the way you think to the way God thinks. And, um, you know, knowing just that God empowers us to do whatever that task is, that he, he will in, empower us and we just leave the results to him. You know, that's really good. I'm glad you brought that out. Uh, because I think it's also important for us to remember that in, in the story of, of Hannah, I think it's important for us to remember that, you know, our beginning doesn't have to dictate our ending. In other mm -hmm. words, you know, what we come from and what we come out of doesn't have to influence or impact mm -hmm. or determine, um, mm -hmm. certainly will influence and impact, but it doesn't have to determine the outcome of our lives. And I think, you know, it's important for us to realize that you know, some, some of us, you know, we come from a godly legacy um, and we have the privilege of having, you know, godly mothers and godly grandmothers and so forth. But everyone doesn't have that story, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people can feel neglected or can feel like, you know, well, maybe my, my life is not useful to the Lord because of my, um, because of my story. Uh, but I'm always encouraged when I read in scriptures of, of individuals that come from very messy backgrounds, you know, mm -hmm. very messy situations, and yet, God used them in very significant ways. And, um, and I, I just want to offer that as an encouragement as well, uh, because in Hannah's life, I mean, her beginning wasn't that, wasn't that positive. It wasn't that good. She couldn't conceive. Um, and, um, and, and at that time, that was like seen as uh, something very significantly, you know, um, degrading and, and bad. Um, and yet through her persistence and her persistence of pursuing the Lord, God was able to make something really positive come out of her life. And yeah. I want to offer that to anyone that maybe feel like, you know, well, my story is messy. Uh, you need to know that we serve a God that's able to do the impossible, even mm -hmm. with uh, messy stories. And even if your story is polished, you know, God still uh, wants to do something very significant. And there's still areas where you need to grow, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that the story of Hannah is necessarily just about, um, you know, God using perfect people to accomplish something good. I think the story of Hannah is about perseverance and persistence, even though your, your story may not be the best. And yeah. so I think it's a good reminder as well. Um, I want to say a few things about you, and then we're going to wrap this up. W one of the things you guys need to know about uh, my wife, and part of the reason why I asked her to be a part of this, is uh, because when I first met my wife, um, the thing that attracted me to her the most was how serious she was about the Lord. And so I've shared this with you many times, um, but um, I, I just appreciate her love for God. I was really impressed uh, with um, how she was committed to the scriptures, how she was committed to knowing God. And I was like, man, somebody got to marry this woman uh, because she got it going on. I mean, she is like really serious about the Lord. And uh, I said, somebody should marry her. Maybe it should be me. And so uh, I went back home and I began to pray about her. And then... Uh, a couple of months later, I saw her, and it was during the springtime when I first saw her. Or we went to this conference together. It was in the middle of the winter, and so she was really bundled up. She gets cold really easily. Um, so I can really appreciate all of her physical beauty. And uh, But some uh, <laughs> months later, I saw her in the spring, and she let all that stuff out. And I was like, uh, well, she let all her clothes off. You know what? Well, her winter clothes off. Let me get this right online, right? All of her winter clothes, right? Not everything. She's a very modest woman. Now, don't get it twisted, right? 
<laughs> but uh, I could see her without the, the winter coat on and all that. And I was like, man, this woman is beautiful. And so I just want to say, um, you know, we appreciate you, me and the kids. We appreciate you for certainly being a beautiful mother. Um, but we appreciate you for being a, a, uh, a godly, a godly woman. And, um, and I want to say on behalf of our church as well, we really appreciate you. You bring a lot to our ministry, and uh, we certainly appreciate you at Christ Community Church. And we've never been the type of church that put labels on people, so we don't, you know, the whole first lady and all that kind of stuff, we never really operate like that. But we do appreciate the fact that we have a woman that's godly and beautiful that's standing next to her, standing next to the pastor of the church. And so we appreciate you. They appreciate you being godly. I appreciate you being beautiful and godly. And so uh, we we'll just appreciate you at Christ Community Church. So thank you so much for being a part of this, and thank you for your words of wisdom. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I want to say as we um, conclude that, um, again, happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there. Um, but I do want to offer to anyone that, you know, in light of what we talked about, we talked a lot about struggles. We talked a lot about just processing um, just difficult situations in life. I do want to let you know that we are here to pray for you, uh, that we want to do that. Even though we can't be together physically, uh, we're still um, at the church. We're still checking our voice messages. And so if you have a prayer request, we ask you to please give us a phone call. Uh, we would love to go to the Father on your behalf. You can reach us by simply calling 216-417-7958. Um, again, 216-417-7958. And um, if, if somebody doesn't pick up the phone, just leave us a message, and we will certainly uh, make sure that we uh, lift up your request to the Lord. Uh, if you would like to email us, you can email us as well. Our email address is info, that's I-N-F-O, info at worshipccc.com. Um, drop us a line, and uh, we'll make sure we lift up your prayer requests before for the Lord. And maybe you're listening to this, and you're like, you know what, I want to get closer to God. I want to come into a relationship with God. I want to know God. I want to be saved. That's some of the language we use sometimes in the church. you just like, I just want to get close to God. Well, you give us a call. Um, during the time that this service is posted online, somebody will be at the church. Um, you give us a call, 216-417-7958. And uh, we would love to talk with you more about what it means to be a follower of Christ. Um, and even if we're not here, if you're viewing this at a, a time that we're not at the building, we're not at the church, uh, leave us a message and we'll make sure that we follow up with you. Uh, but certainly one of the things we want you to get from our conversation is that um, God can change your life. And um, God has a purpose for your life, but that purpose begins with you knowing him. And so we encourage you to reach out to us. Again, you can call us, 216-417-7958. Um, or you can also send us an email at info at worshipccc.com. So uh, please, you know, reach out to us if you need us. Kelly, thank you again for being with us. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. I hope your husband does something very special for you. I hope so, too. All right. All right. <laughs> Let me pray for us. God, we thank you for this time that we've had to discuss your word and just to have a fun dialogue about what it means to, um, to be a godly person, and particularly to be a godly mother, but really generally just to be a godly person striving to live for you. Father, we pray that the things that we've talked about, uh, we pray, God, that those things will resonate in the hearts of people. We pray, God, that it will help draw people closer to you and bring people to a place of glorifying you with, with their life. Uh, we love you, God, and we bless you. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, uh, be glory and honor both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you again for being a part of our service. We really appreciate We enjoy um, having you view um, our worship. We hope that it's a blessing to you as we celebrate our King and as we worship our God. So thank you so much for being a part of our service. Just a few things I want to say by way of announcements before we wrap up this segment of our service. Uh, the first thing is I want to let all the kids know, all the kids that's all, that, that are a part of our ministry, I want the kids to know that we have not forgotten about you, that we're thinking about you. And um, next Sunday, Sunday, uh, May 17th, uh, we're going to provide a children's Zoom meeting. 
at 12.15. And so we're actually going to offer two of them. Uh, we're going to offer one at 12.15, 12.15 to 12.45. And that's going to be for our younger kids. That's going to be for our kids ages 2 to 8. So for our young people that are ages 2 to 8, uh, we want to invite you to join us next Sunday um, at 12.15 to be a part of our children's Zoom meeting. And then for kids who are a little bit older, um, that's 9 to 12, we, we want to invite you to be a part of that from 12.50 to 120. We're going to give out more details about the Zoom meeting. And so parents, we'll make sure you get all the details, the links, and all those different things so you can know how to access it. But I just want to give you guys a heads up that next Sunday, we are looking forward to hanging out with our kids. Along those lines, uh, we're also going to do something special for our parents as well. We're inviting our parents to be a part of a Zoom meeting also. Um, that's going to take place on Thursday, May 14th. Um, it's going to take place at 7 o'clock in the evening. And so we encourage our parents to be a part of that if you can. Again, we'll send you out all the details. We'll make sure all the information is um, to you. Uh, but we're inviting our parents to be a part of that. Uh, we just want to offer some encouragement to our parents. We know that we were thrust into a situation where uh, we have to um, now homeschool and entertain our kids all day. And so we just want to provide some encouragement and some prayer time for our parents. And so again, we invite our parents to join us on May 14th um, at 7 o'clock in the evening um, through Zoom. We will give you all the information, all the details of how you can access that. And again, if you have any questions about that or if you didn't get the information, um, just just give us a phone call, 216-417-7958, um, or shoot us an email, info at worshipccc.com, to make sure that you get all the information you need to be a part of the Zoom children's meeting, and then also a part of our parent meeting um, as well. Um, also, I want to remind everybody that this Wednesday, we have a lot going on this Wednesday coming up. Um, on this Wednesday, we have our Bible study at 12 o'clock. That's going to be on Facebook Live. Uh, if you haven't been a part of that, I encourage you to be a part of that. It's a great blessing as we've been studying the book of 1 John, so I invite you to be a part of that. If you would like to join it, just simply like us on Facebook. Um, our name on Facebook is Christ Community Church Cleveland. Simply like us on Facebook, and you should be able to access um, our, our, our online Bible study. So please join us for that. Um, also, on this Wednesday, we're having our prayer meeting. And so I encourage you, if you can, to be a part of that. All the information about how to access our prayer meeting is going to be on our webpage, worshipccc.com. Um, there will be a link there that you can um, click on so that you can access the Zoom meeting. So I encourage you to be a part of that as well. We're also going to send out some text messages about that also. But this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we're going to get together for prayer. So we have a lot of exciting things going on in our ministry. And so um, I'm really excited about the things that God is doing in and through Christ Community Church. If you would like to be in the know of what's happening at Christ Community Church, you need to be a part of our text messaging group. And so it's really easy to access that. All you have to do is text at Christcom, the symbol at Christcom to 81010. Again, if you would like to be a part of our text messaging group, simply text at Christcom to 81010, and um, you receive all of our messages. So please make sure that you're connected to that. And then lastly, we so appreciate your giving um, to the ministry. Uh, we don't take it for granted um, that God has placed upon your heart to contribute to our to our church, to our ministry. We certainly appreciate it. We just want to say thank you. We're so appreciative of God's faithfulness during this time. If you would like to give to our ministry, there are three ways that you can give. Um, you can give by text. If you would like to text to give, just simply text CCC Giving. Um, that's three C's, CCC Giving. Text that to 73256. Again, if you would like to text to give, simply text CCC Giving to 73256. Um, you can also give online. If you go to our webpage, worshipccc.com, if you click on the Give tab, it give you some information, some instructions on how you can give that way. And then you can also send in a check if you would like to do that. You can send that to our physical location. Um, our address here is 2065 Lee Road. Um, that's Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. Um, again, if you would like to send a check, you can send it to 2065 Lee Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. And so uh, we appreciate your giving. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this service. And um, Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you.